So pretty much everyone in the home lab space likes going fast, like really, really fast, but not quite like sell your kidney fast. That's why we're not doing 400 gig yet. But it's really common in the home lab space to be building out 10 gig or even faster networks in your LAN, in your lab. It's really easy to get cards like this, Intel X520, 10 gig card used. Maybe that Mellanox Connect X4, 25 gig card used. Really cheap for your desktop servers and stuff like that. But what about your laptop? It's a bit harder to go fast in your laptop. So today, I'm taking a look at this guy. This is the Light One by Raiden Digit. It's a dual 25 gigabit ethernet card for Thunderbolt. And I'm gonna be testing it with my MacBook Air. So if this sounds good to you, then come along in this adventure. Also, if you're in the mood for this beautiful Cloud Free is the new luxury shirt featuring my face on a hard drive platter, check out my merch store, link down below for that in the description. Also, Raiden Digit was kind enough to send me this product for review in retail packaging. Now I reached out to them, as well as everyone else who makes 10 gig and 25 gig Thunderbolt network adapters, so I can take a look at these and compare them on my channel. So they sent this to me, no money changed hands, on with the video. So guess now it's time, open the box. Okay, so in the box, we've got quick start guide, don't need that. Ooh, they gave me some transceivers. This looks like uh, the unit itself. It is rather large, as you can tell by the size of my hands. No banana, sorry. It's got their logo on it. Nice metal finish. So on one side, that looks like a cooling slot to me. SD card reader, micro SD, two USBs. That says power display, power link. So I'm guessing these guys are Thunderbolt and those guys are just USB. Got a peel on the bottom. Yeah. Other side, I've got power delivery in to the wall. My two SFP28s for 25 gig cooling display port. Yeah, on the side, I got USB. Nothing on the other side, by the way. So here are the two transceivers. They are not identical. So this guy here says GESFET. 1 gig RJ45, and then this one over here says 10 gig RJ45, and it also says 10 gig 5, 2 and a half, 1. So we'll of course test that. This one they probably just include to use the second port. This looks like a power adapter, and they kindly sent me the European adapter because I live in Finland now, or will soon. And they've included two cables here, so I think one of these is power. And one is Thunderbolt, so this one's power from the power adapter to the dock, and then this guy's Thunderbolt from the dock to the laptop. Now, ultimately, I assume most of the people that are buying this are gonna be using it with a laptop. So I've got my M1 MacBook Air here to test with. This of course supports USB 4, so I can test the full features of the dock. It's not the highest end Mac, so we'll see what kind of throughput we can get. I'm not expecting 50 gigs on my MacBook Air. But first, I want to know a little bit more about the hardware in this thing and do some more scientific tests. So for those, I need Linux. So I'm going to use here a little mini PC I've got. It's got USB 4, Thunderbolt 4. So we're going to use that for some Linux-based tests, see what kind of hardware is in here, what NIC we're dealing with, that kind of thing. So here I got the mini PC, USB 4. This is connected to a 10 gig switch, so 10 gig copper. And here is the dock. So using their included power cable and run off to their 140 watt power brick. So that's going to power on the dock. Next up, I need their 10 gig SFP. It's like this is the 10 gig one. So I'm just gonna randomly put that in one of the two ports that's upside down. And we'll get my 10 gig copper hooked up to that. Next, I've got their included USB 4 Thunderbolt cable. We'll hook this guy up. By the way, I'm testing with Ubuntu 25.04. I haven't upgraded my flash drive to 25.10 yet, but the kernel should be new enough for this. So let's take a look at what hardware we see on our LSPCI, things like that. So taking a look at LSPCI here, we have the Pink Sardine USB 4 Thunderbolt controller. That's part of the chip. And that appears to be connecting up to this guy, Intel Corporation. JHL 7440 Thunderbolt 3 USB controller Titan Ridge. 
And off of that, we have two uh, Mellanox Technology MT27710s, which is ConnectX4 generation. Okay, so that guy has PCI Express Gen 3. Doesn't tell me how many lanes, and it's got DisplayPort 1.4. Taking a look at just the ConnectX4, it's running at PCI Gen 3 by 4 lanes, which gives us, what is that, 32 giga transfers per second, so reasonable. So 32 giga transfers per second is less than if you were to max out both 25 gig ports. I'm guessing most of you who are buying this aren't going to be able to handle 50 gigs of traffic on your laptop anyway. So PCI Gen 3 by 4, it's what we can do over Thunderbolt, and it's probably pretty reasonable for this. Now of course, I got two NICs here, so ENS1, F0, MP0, and MP1. And these guys just came up and worked. Okay, so now that we know what hardware is inside it, I'm going to plug it into my Mac now. So this is the computer that I'm going to be using for my testing, MacBook Air M1. I'm expecting a lot of you guys that buy a dock like this will be using it with a laptop. If you've got a desktop PC, it would make way more sense to buy the actual Mellanox Connect X4 than to buy one of these. But that's just my opinion, I guess. So, pretty easy. Just going to take the Thunderbolt cable, plug it in. And my Mac is now being charged by the dock, and I get 10 gig copper going into the Mellanox card on the dock. So let's see how that looks in macOS. So over here in network, I got Thunderbolt Ethernet slot 1 and Wi-Fi. They're both on the same network. In IF config, it looks like I EN19, which is down, and EN18, which is on my LAN. So now we should be able to iperf to my test system. And there we go, about 9 gigabits, 9.2 gigabits. So that's what we expect. Can also do bi-directional, see if we can get 10 gig symmetric. 8.93, 8.86. So I got 10 gig going over 10 gig copper here with the included RJ45 adapter. That's going to the back to my Microtik CRS312. Video on the CRS312, by the way, it's an amazing switch. From there, we're doing 10 gig fiber up to the PC here. This is one of my Proxmox systems. I do all kinds of testing with it. Now this system actually also has a 25 gig NIC but I don't have a 25 gig switch, I have 10 gig switches. So I have a 25 gig DAC, a direct attached copper cable. Now these guys just go right in the SFP slots. They actually have no electronics inside at all, so we're directly connecting the SFP slot, which is the Ethernet Mac, straight together. So let's hook this guy up. Sorry, my bench is such a mess, but we're going in here. Oh, we're backwards. So we're on the upper port there. And here we're going in. Oh, I'm backwards again. There we go. So over Mac OS, we've got port 2 self-assigned IP. And I have config, it shows we've got an FE80 and V4 link local. Of course, we can use the link local also, so let's see how this works. Okay, about 15 gigabits. How about Bydeer? What does Bydeer do? Let's see, can we get 15 gig bi-directional? Yeah, about. Okay, we're definitely doing more than 10 gig. So 11 gig and 16 gig, okay, makes sense. So clearly I'm bottlenecked by something, but it's something different in each direction. So my single direction test gets me 15 gigabits. My bi-directional test gets me 15 each way. So I'm not limited by the total CPU throughput on either system or the total bandwidth on each system. It's something that's limited to one direction. So I could try running both the 10 gig and the 25 gig at once and see if I can get higher throughput there. Let's see what that looks like. So I'm just going to start this test on the 10 gig for a long time. So we're doing 9 gig. If I come over here and I start a 25 gig test at the same time, you can see we're also getting 9 gigs or so. And on this side we've dropped down to 5 and 7. So we're still getting about our 15 gigabit per direction throughput. So it seems like our bottleneck truly is about 15 gigabits in each direction separately. And I'm pretty sure that's the limit of the Thunderbolt here. And I tested with the Linux system as well and got that same limit, roughly 15 gigabit. So it seems like that's the limit of the Thunderbolt components used in the dock. Now that's not a big surprise to me, given I wasn't expecting to get 50 gigabits of bandwidth out of Thunderbolt on an M1 MacBook, really anything with Thunderbolt 4. But it is something to be aware of, even though this is have two 25 gigabit ports, you're not going to get 50 gigabits symmetric through this whole chain. That doesn't mean it's not helpful to go 25 gig over 10 gig, 
especially if you're running fiber, the cost is very little to upgrade to 25 gig over 10 gig. But that's just a, a fact to realize. But how about fiber? Should we try some fiber? So I got a fiber going off to my switch. I'm gonna need a transceiver. So pull out the old transceiver box. And I'm gonna choose this guy. It's one of my 10 gig LRMs. Now pop all the dust covers off. Got to get everything nice and clean. And we're gonna switch out the 10 gig copper. This adapter is very hot, by the way. Now this is quite warm. I can hold my hand on it, but it's uncomfortable, which is actually similar to the other Connect X4 that I have. Um, let's get this little guy out here. Now I know this guy is gonna be very hot. Ooh, yeah, that's very hot. Okay, in the box for you, and fiber coming in. So now we should have a fiber link to my Mac. And of course we do, it's still up. Does this actually show me anything about the transceiver in the slot? Hardware. Yeah, 10 g base ER, cool. But I don't expect that'll actually change our speeds. And no, it doesn't, it's obviously just 10 gig. So one last question I had about this whole setup is can Samba on Mac OS even do 15 gigabit, let alone 25 gig. So I did some tests. I don't know the best benchmarking tools for macOS, but I used Addo Disk Benchmark. I ran it first over the 10 gig fiber and I got 1100 megabytes per second to a RAM disk on my test system. Now that makes perfect sense. We're clearly limited by the 10 gig fiber there. So moving over to 25 gig with the RAM disk again on the test system, I was able to hit 1700 megabytes per second. So that corresponds pretty well to the 15 gigabits per second we were getting. Now that seemed really, really fast to me. Um, but then I tried the local disk and I got about twice that. I got 3,600 megabytes per second for the local SSD built into my MacBook Air. Now to be fair to Apple here, Apple puts their memory controllers and their NVMe controllers on the die of the CPU. So they're not using NVMe. They have a memory controller for flash storage and they're just using bare flash which is very, very, very fast. So Apple's done a good job here, but with the Raiden Digit Dock, I'm still able to get 1700 megabytes per second, which is absolutely wild. And unless you have an NVMe storage pool, you won't be able to hit that on the back end anyway. But if you're buying a 25 gig adapter, I'm guessing you're probably also buying NVMe for your server, but I guess you never know. So yeah, we can definitely saturate this guy over Samba, which I wasn't expecting Mac OS to be able to do, but it can. Okay, so I think that's all I got for testing of the Raiden Digit Light one. They're never really intended to test like docks like this, although this form factor does make a lot of sense to me. I was looking for 10 gig and 25 gig USB and Thunderbolt Ethernet adapters. So many of you probably have two and a half gig. I've got one over here. So this is a two and a half gig USB three adapter. These are really commonly USB three. They're not that expensive anymore. Everyone should have some of them. Now there's some new ones that are coming out that do 5 gig as well. That's again over USB 3. When we start talking about 10 gig though, um, there's a bit of a bandwidth challenge. So for 10 gig ethernet, we start looking at like PCIe solutions. So this guy here, the Raiden Digit, this is using an Intel Thunderbolt slave chip to get four lanes of PCIe Gen 3 with which it connects to a Mellanox Connect X4 generation NIC. So same one we have, Connect X4 I got over here, 25 gig generation NIC. Now the Connect X4 was a fantastic NIC for 25 gig era. Highly recommend that even still today, I love mine that I have, I would definitely deploy them. But this is a much more expensive solution than the single chip Realtek we get in something like this. This is one single chip made by Realtek. It's got the two and a half gig USB three, one chip. So we're, get, we're doing a much more expensive setup here. We're doing 10 gig Thunderbolt, PCI Express to PCI Express NIC. Now there are a couple different ways a company could implement this, which is why I want to test them and see how they're doing it. So Raiden Digit has chosen a Mellanox dual 25 gig, which is very fast. Other options they have would be an Intel based NIC. So this is the Intel 500 series, which is older. If they were making a new device, they'd probably want to use the 700 series, maybe 800 series. Um, if they're going for a lower cost device, there's always the Marvell Aquantra 10 gig NIC family, which is also an excellent NIC family, by the way. I love those that I have in PCIe cards. Um, Marvell Aquantra even supports 10 gig SFP, as well as 10 gig multi-gig RJ45. 
So I expect some of the other competitors to this guy will be using the Marvel Aquantia chip, which I'll be interested to see. Um, so that's basically why I want to test these guys, to see what topologies they're using, what our bandwidth limits are, what's the realistic bandwidth we can hit through something like this over USB 4 Thunderbolt to a MacBook like I've got, or a Linux system or whatever. So that's why I tested this. These guys just happened to be the first ones to send me something, which is why I tested them first. I have at least one other product coming that I'm hoping to test in the same series. Now I was looking for just NICs, but this guy has some more features too. So he's got a micro SD card reader and full size SD, I guess, too. These are rated for 300 megabytes a second. I actually probably would have tested this, except my high-speed memory card is in the camera you're watching me on right now. So I didn't want to stop that recording. We've also got Thunderbolt daisy chain. I did try to daisy chain both of my Thunderbolt systems together to get Thunderbolt net. And that was not happy with me, but my Linux system has been kind of flaky with Thunderbolt. So the MacBook's been rock solid. I haven't had any problems with this with the MacBook. So that's good. We've also got two USB 3 ports that are USB Type-C. We've got four USB 3.0 Type-A. So this would be the 10, 5 gigabit, I think. I don't remember what generation that is. But these are USB 3.0. These guys, I think, are USB 3.2. Blame the USB guys for making it so confusing. I've also got DisplayPort out. My Mac can only drive one display, so I've only, I mean, I was like, can you only use one display? So that's what we got here. I've also got a fan for cooling. This thing got really hot in testing. It was still, I was still able to hold my hand on it, but it was certainly very hot. Their included 10 gig RJ45 adapter also got very, very hot in the SFP cage, but it didn't have any problems. It's still working fine. And those adapters do get hot because the line drivers for 10 gig ethernet use a lot of power. That's one of the reasons that fiber is better and we should all be running fiber, right? At 10 gig and above. So I'm Applard. If you want to buy the shirt I'm wearing, cloud free is the new luxury. Friendly reminder to log out for self care. This is on my merch store, link down below for that Kofi. I also accept tips there, but I'd rather you buy something like a shirt instead of just paying me flat money. Um, if you want to chat with me, I have a Discord server link down below for that. Love messaging you guys on Discord. You can buy the Raiden Digit Light 1. I have a link to that as well. And uh, as always, I'll see you guys on the next adventure.